Good morning, Jay First Baptist Church and all the area of Jay and those who watch from distances. Um, this is uh, this will be the last of the devotions for this week, and then tomorrow is Sunday, and we'll have our Palm Sunday service for tomorrow. But I just want to just uh, go over and recap a couple things that are going on. Uh, remember, our governor in the state of Florida has has requested and made an order about uh, distancing. We need to be careful with that, and especially for those I've read through the part, portion of the of the order uh, a couple different times already that we need to be careful. The coronavirus is serious, and uh, the we also know that the Lord's still in control of all things, and that He will always. He will always uh, do his will in all things, and he does care for us, and he does love us. And we just need to be reminded that um, that even though uh, the, hope, the, the world might have fleeting hope, we always have perfect hope in God. But I wanted to also to go over a couple of the items we're going to be doing uh, for this coming week. Now, tomorrow is Palm Sunday, and we're going to have a message dealing with the triumphant entry of Christ into the city of Jerusalem. This is coming to the end of his ministry here on the earth in his first coming, how he will defeat sin, death, and Satan on the cross. And this uh, this Sunday, we're going to be uh, talking about the triumphant entry on what we call the Palm Sunday time. Also, too, I want to want to prepare all of us that I have ordered special communion cups that will be sent out to everyone um, or, or be given out and allowed for anyone in the church. Uh, they're pre-filled. They have the juice and they have the cracker on them. And basically you peel off one piece at a time, first the cracker part and then the, or the, or the wafer and then the juice. And uh, we're going to be doing a communion service together through the online services um, on, on the following Sunday, on Easter Sunday. So what we will do is these uh, these cups are supposed to come in about Wednesday. So if that's the case, probably Friday we'll be out here at the church. We'll make it available with uh, so we keep the social distancing going that you can come and pick up the communion cups for your family. And then when we have the service, whether you watch it online or whether you watch it afterwards on either YouTube or later on later in the day for Facebook, that during that service, you can participate with the communion. I know I was talking to an individual yesterday, and they were talking about how some people said, well, we should need we need to be at the church to have communion. That's not necessarily so. You got to look at how it was done in the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament. They didn't have Facebook Live. They didn't have others. And whether we're on Facebook Live together, viewing and being part of this, or whether we are um, in the same room together, it does not matter if we're doing it together. This is something, this is an ordinance of the church that Jesus himself encouraged us to do. Remember, there are two ordinances. You have baptism, and that's for a person that uh, asks Christ to be a savior. And that's the ordinance to show all the Christians around that, that this person does know Christ as Savior, and it's a joyous time. But also, too, uh, he, we have the ordinance of, of the uh, communion table and where the, where the wafer, the bread, was, was given. And that's to represent the body of Christ. And then also, too, the juice or the fruit of the vine, the, the grape juice, is to show the blood and to be a symbol of the blood of Christ, how, how Christ gave himself fully so that we could have eternal life. And it, that's more of our vertical worshiping Christ. That's why it's so important that when you partake of, of communion, that the, the Bible gives two stipulations. One is you must know Christ as your personal Savior. And then secondly is you should be right with the Lord. And that's why when we do the communion services at our church, we have what's called an open communion, which means you do not have to be a church member at the church to partake with the communion. If you are a born again Christian and you're trying your best to live a, a right life, then you are. You, we 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 commune together with this table, and so also too there might be some people in town. Uh, we do have some extra cups 
that if if you if you would like to do this and and watch online with us on Facebook, uh, you can call me um, at the church and and we can make arrangements that maybe we, if we have extras we can we can give you some of the cups too and you can partake with us too. But uh, we just want this to make it a special day. I know Easter Sunday. Ever since I've been here and for most of the time in my life has been a Sunday where we were busy. Either we were hosting or being part of a sunrise service. I've had sunrise services on the beach, participated with them at uh, down in the Miami area. I've had sunrise services in our front front courtyard at various churches in both Texas and in Florida. And I've also had sunrise services in Honduras. And then on top of the sunrise service, always the Easter service, and a lot of times I was involved in cooking breakfast, and we had a had a nice gathering, and then then the regular service for the morning service. And sometimes here, as well as other churches, we we've, we've had cantatas. Other times it's just been the preaching, which is just special music. I understand that, and and yes, this year's going to be a little different. But we are going to try our very best to make it a very special service. There will be special music. And we will be practicing uh, our social distancing here at the church. It will be very skeletal. And we will have it set up as normal. Uh, t- tomorrow will be a two-part process. Tomorrow, uh, Doug and Lydia are going to be at their RV. They're going to do our music. And then right away on our on our J First Baptist Church Facebook page, I will then come on and do the do the sermon part, and that's how we will do tomorrow. But Easter, we're going to attempt to do it a little differently to make it a little bit more special. We want everyone in our church and those who we touch in this community and other communities to see that it is important. Yes, worshiping together is, but it doesn't mean we can't use the technology of today. And worship that way. I'm going to give you a couple verses. Uh, this is this is just before the triumphant entry of Jesus into the into the uh, city of Jerusalem. It was when Jesus stopped and had a dinner at Bethany, and he was with Lazarus, who he had risen risen from the dead. He was with Martha and Mary, and Mary we know took a pound of ointment, a sp- what they call a spinnaker, a very very expensive spice. Very, a very pretty uh, smelling uh, ointment and poured it on the feet of Jesus. And there was a little tension there. I know uh, Judas, of course, looking at the cost, he, he was a little bit uh, upset. Judas Iscariot was. And he said, uh, what, what's going on here? That's a lot of money. That's over oh, uh, for 300 pence, uh, a very, very expensive perfume. And Jesus said this. He says, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. And I think right here, Jesus put into perspective the importance. Yes, we want to help those that have needs. And that's important. That's an important part of the church. That's reaching out to the community. But also, too, that we need to remember that we need to honor God. And yes, we can get so busy in doing things, but we need to honor God. And Christ here rebuked Judas Iscariot and basically said, let her be. She has done this to honor me, and I'm God. And she's done this for my bearing. And and remember, yes, there will always be the poor. In fact, yesterday I was talking to the uh, Florida Baptist uh, person in charge of the dental bus, and we were discussing how... They're putting things on hold, at least through through the month of, of April. And then they're seeing what, what the next step will be. But uh, as I was talking with, with, with Mark Johnson, we were, we, we were discussing the need and the importance of the dental bus. And that, you know, we have our dental bus in the very end of July. So, Lord willing, that this coronavirus is gone, that we can really minister to those that have needs with uh with, with with the dental care and we have we we are keeping our food bank open too so especially if you're, you're a church member here and you're in need please let me know if you're in our community and you have a need please let me know we want to minister to you 
But we always need to remember, fellow Christian, that as we minister, to always remember and be reminded that we need to honor God, not just in our ministering, but also, too, with our worship. And we are in such a wonderful time period for being in an area, in, in a time where we have so much technology. I mean, I'm amazed. I never thought when I, well, years ago, I would ever be doing messages on the Facebook. I never thought that. Never took much, much, much account of Facebook. Facebook, uh, you can get lost, I think, sometimes in Facebook. But what a great opportunity and a great tool we have to reach out, not just to our local community, but to those around us. And I just hope you all have a blessed day today. And um, I know t Saturday is usually one of those catch-up days. I know some uh, some of our farmers are in the field working uh, very, very robustly, trying to get plants in the ground. I know some of us are just want to take a um, maybe a, a break and take a breath. And Saturday is uh, was was given to us as a day of rest. Day to, and, and we make it a day of catch-up sometimes, but try to get some rest too. Try to make this a day where you relax a little bit. And also too, if you, if you remember, remember a friend, maybe give them a call, a phone call. Um, maybe write a letter today and get it in the mail, however you do it. But, but make a good contact and lift someone else up. Lift others up in prayer. Pray for this church, our church family, and pray for those who are who are really on the front lines. We have wonderful doctors and nurses, police departments, fire departments, and and those that that do the ambulance work and many in food service who work so hard and sometimes are exposed to more chance of getting the coronavirus than many of us are. And I want to encourage you, pray for them. They need to hear, or they need to, to, to be lifted up before the Lord. It is so, so important. And never forget that God is in control. He was never taken by surprise, and he loves us so much. Let's have prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, and we do thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, as we are going through this time of social distancing, very difficult for some, especially who are very social people. It's not easy. It's not easy to to think about doing church at a distance. Church, one of the one of the things a, a pastor does is to have contact. And and many of us working in different jobs in the school system. I know it's difficult both for teacher as well as student. But may you carry us through. May you give us the 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 strength May you give us the wisdom in order to conduct ourselves in a best manner to show the world around us that, that, that we serve a loving God who does care for us, even during a pandemic. And Lord, I just ask that you keep us safe, keep us well, allow us to, to come through the other end of this, closer walking with you. We ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen.